morning. Yep, we started harvest off right. Dead battery in my pickup. Omen of good things to come. So first thing this morning, we are hooking up the new Underforth grain cart. For today only, or for this week only, we are going to hook that to the John Deere. That is not gonna be permanent. Right now, the other Challenger is hooked to the case planter. We need to clean that case planter up. We're waiting on our new pressure washer. When that gets here, we'll clean that planter up because it is leaving. And we'll hook that tractor to the grain cart. You ready to try some corn? Yeah. You excited? Oh yeah. Can't wait. Dad already changed plans first day of harvest. Yep. We're not hooking that to the grain cart. So we're gonna go unhook the Challenger from the case planter and hook it on the grain cart. Was it fun to drive your tractor for a minute? Yes. Were you kind of looking forward to carting with it? No. Yeah, we no right. okay. So everyone assumed that would be the tractor we would want to cart with, but that power shift transmission for grain carting kind of sucks. So if this is your first time watching us, we have two farms that we store equipment at. Uh, this farm over here is where the planter is. We've got to back it out. Looks like we just narrowly avoided tragedy. The wing locks weren't on and the raise locks aren't on. We just about crushed a unit, but we caught it in time. So we're gonna back this thing out of here, unfold it, lock it all up, and then back it right back in. Or back it in instead of pull it in. Tractor's a little dirty. We never did actually clean up uh, the planter, which is kind of odd. Usually we clean this thing up after double crops. So contrary to popular belief, I do not hate this case planter. Uh, we just have not had the greatest of luck with the openers that were on it. Uh, we've replaced most of them. If we were keeping it, I would replace all of them. I would re-shim all of them to the same spec. And then outside of the folding issue, where every now and then it just decides to not fold, I think that planter would run pretty well. The meters themselves do awesome. Those are precision meters. Just the openers and the folding mechanism. Just the folding mechanism, I really don't know what we could do to fix that. That's a software slash hydraulic pressure issue. Looky here who we caught walking out and about. Even rocking his millennial farmer t-shirt. Little known fact, Zach gave him that shirt personally. Well, he mailed it. So we're gonna make everybody's day and announce it now. George is coming out of retirement. Man, he didn't say anything, but we, I was joking. No, we never get the jack. That's good. Tractor's awful dirty. Too much. Way go up. Got it. He can. That. Okay, so I'm in the wet bin here. This will be the first bin that receives grain. So I'm just going through it, checking it out. All the AGI cables are tied down. Floor's a little dirty, but main thing I'm checking here, center sump here. Always fills up with stuff, like rotten stuff. Um, just that stuff falls off the side of the walls and stuff, it'll fall down in here. Hmm. Guess we'll have to find a new spatula. And that's why you clean your sump holes. Okay, so the two corn bins that we're going to be going into today, they are ready to go. Tied down, cleaned out. Dr. Watson's over here at the combine. A few episodes back, we had a sensor to put on there. Anyways, Dr. Watson, he's here. Finished putting a sensor on the gleaner. That sensor is really no big deal. We could have ran without it, but the combine's clean, so do it before we get all dirty. Shouldn't take Evan too long. You recovered from farm science? Uh, yeah. Oh, perfect. I thought I lost that thing. A little dusty in there. Yeah. Been worse. So we are nearing go time. Dad is in the combine. I hear it running. I don't. I don't know if him and Evan are done, but I do know that one thing we will do is we will drive this to the local gravel pit, weigh this truck, and then weigh what we put on the truck, make sure our cart scales are good. Then we'll go ahead down to the gravel pit. The neighbors are going, it's definitely going to happen today. So dad just got to the field. I'm going to go hop in the combine because I ain't going to miss the first kernels of corn going through that thing. I got it. 
it's nice and clean. Everybody take a look now, so it ain't gonna be long. Hey, it handled it. So this field here doesn't have ends right here because it was going to be an ICO crop tour plot, but they ended up scrapping it. Had some GPS issues on the strip till uh, between the planter and the strip tiller, so yeah, it didn't work out the greatest. But made a good staging area. Alright, get out and check. Don't feel very wet. So we're gonna get out and check, see what's behind the combine. No, well, I'm gonna walk up here and see what kind of header loss we've got. This corn feels very dry, so I'm sure we are losing a little bit. Actually, not too bad. So to check for header loss, I'm checking before like we stopped right here. So the the, the combine has not thrown any out if it's going to. This is all anything we find here is going to be off the head. So see, there's some on the ground. There's some more on the ground. A lot of it's going to depend on like every now and then you'll see a, an ear that's hanging like that, and that knife roll comes through. It'll just crush it and corn will go flying everywhere. Here's an example where the knife roll caught this. Just uh, shattered it. So its ground speed looks a little slower than the cloth, which we kind of expected, but moving right along. So I know someone's going to ask about the yield and the moisture. Well, the truth of the matter is, we don't know. Uh, these are the first loads of the year, so everything needs calibrated. When BJ finishes unloading on this truck, we're going back to the gravel pit. I have a picture of how much this truck weighed empty. He's recording how much we're putting on. So yeah, we'll figure out how good the scales are on the cart. And the cart can let the combine calibrate its shield monitor. And then, by the end of the day, we might know what this field made. So we're just gonna put a little bit in. Now we're gonna run over to this bin and make sure everything's going through and we don't have a plugged up cushion box up top. I would rather find out with just like a five, five gallon bucket load of corn versus you know a couple hundred bushel of corn. That's a good sign. That's good. Corn is running. So we can unload a truck here in about 10 minutes. So BJ tested this corn right here beside the grain bins. Apparently it's 29%. Probably had about a point because that was a hand shelling. He did that right beside the end rows. A little wet. But now we will test the moisture on this corn we just ran.
That's not bad. 19%. Perfect. So we will run this through the dryer. Not very much though. So um, we're going to run in the dryer because I'm sure there's going to be other parts in that field that are 20. There's probably going to be other parts that are 18. But for now, that's where we're at. Hey everybody. Well, we finally got started here. It's cleaner. Done about 17 acres. Finally got everything figured out. Got it calibrated. Yield. Moved right along. We're running all 3.5 to 4 mile an hour. Play a little more. And uh, I don't know if you can see the yields up there. Kind of surprised. What surprised me. Pretty good. Pretty dry. 17, 18 percent moisture. 19. I got it against 19. So we're running right along. Uh, yeah, there's uh, about four thousand bushel an hour, thirty-seven hundred bushel an hour. Moving right along, hardly any loss. Just a shade of rooter loss. Not bad at all. Uh, we got another uh, section to take out of the, under the straw choppers. A uh, pan there. We're going to take it out in the morning. That'll open up another crate there and help a little bit too. But just a just a really really clean sand. Just almost perfect. I can't believe how clean it is. Not cracking it, not tearing it up, drying it like the old uh, my Lexions do. It's just, uh, I'm really pleased so far. Uh, you know, we've run four mile an hour and it's kind of corn. It's, it's uh, that's pretty good, pretty good. Well, that progressed quickly. One of the best parts about harvest is Caleb turns into a chef and she starts feeding me every night. So on her way to football practice, she's dropping off the, uh, she's dropping off dinner. Hello. Hello. Hi, Dax. Hi. Are you filming? Yep. You're a saint. Oh, I know. Burnt myself on the oven. Oh. Did you think I would know by now? Oh. A little closer, a little closer, about 30 inches. Uh, they're in there trying to get the car to go on. Having a little trouble there, I think. But I uh, get to figure it out. They're on tires, but uh, it is what it is. Don't really notice the offset really too bad in the, in the up here, but it is offset. When you fold it up, it sticks out four, three or four inches past the, right, or the tire on the right side. On the left side, it's it's inside the tire. So uh, so far, we've got along okay with it. So, so earlier, Dad mentioned around six o'clock we would exchange out. He would come dump trucks, and I'd run the gleaner. Do you guys believe him? I don't know. Our moisture's not bad at all. If you can read my chicken scratch, it's 19 to 20.5 being the wettest. Not too shabby. I guess I am, in fact, going to run the gleaner. I'm taking the next truck down, but sure, just my luck. We forgot to fuel that combine uh, before we took it down there for some reason, so we're going to run a couple more loads and then probably call it quits for the night. It's uh, about 7 o'clock, so time we get her low on fuel probably about dark maybe a little after dark we might get trouble oh don't run from me i feed you i feed you come here come here first of many dinners on the side of a pickup in the, in the coming months, I'm sure. There's uh, Dr. Watson, we call him, Evan. He works for Precision Ag. He's been down there most of the day helping us get things set up. Finally got everything going, I think. I'd like to thank them, Precision Ag. They're a good company to work with. And he's uh, he's really a good tech. Gives their, good as they come, I think. Well, that's great. Excellent way to start the harvest. Out of fuel. Yeah, we got enough for one more load. So I'm waiting on Dad to get back. He just was going around the field when I got here, so I'm gonna check Agfinity, see where he's at. Ah, there we go. So that's what the combine's showing at the second, at the moment. Uh, looks like he's coming back towards me, I guess. I am um, right here. Combine is right there. Looks like the yield's pretty good. This is extremely sandy soil, so we'll take that anytime we can get it over here. I guess this 32 acres right here, or 27 acre field, I guess, uh, the first one we did uh, went 237, so that's probably a record for that particular field. Gives me high hope for the rest of our fields. Yeah, it's pretty quiet in this. Uh, it's a little quieter my next hill. There's the corn coming in the back. I see it coming in. Hard to turn my head around there, so I got a mirror right up here. I can see that mirror. 
I can see the sample coming in back here. So I don't have to turn around. I've always put a mirror in combine so I don't have to turn around and look at it. Let's walk out here and see if we can see where the gleaner was seeding. I know most people are joking when they say that, but I think some people really do think they're bad combines. I'm going to tell you if this thing's a piece of junk. We paid a lot of money for it, so if it's a turd, I'm not going to hold back. That combine wasn't free. It's ours. I will let you know. I do want it to work, but if it doesn't work, it will not stay long. But the good news is, <laughs> it's working pretty good. I mean, yeah, there's going to be corn on the ground. You're going to have that with any combine. I mean, we're running good corn. That's pretty dry, so it is shelling pretty easy. But it's not like there's corn everywhere on this ground. Man, it got dirty. It got dirty. What did you get dirty for? Yeah. Okay, I finally got Dad out of here. No, I'm just kidding. He's going to go dump one truck though, load the dryer, and I'm, I've only got one fuel bar. Yeah, I got one fuel bar to run, so I'm going to load this truck and maybe one more. I asked him how the gleaner was doing, and he said, not worth a beep. Then he laughed. Uh, he said he's been running about four miles an hour. Uh, combine's been doing great, so I guess he was joking. He had a camera in here somewhere. Said he used it too. I don't know what he did with it. So one thing that kind of sucks right now about running the gleaner, we don't have row feelers yet. The guy who ordered the head, which was me, for whatever reason, ordered it with head sight but without row feelers. Uh, definitely, definitely screwed up there. But we got them coming. We're, they're just not here. You know, like everything due to COVID, supply chain shortages. But we do have it coming. It's been shipped. We should have it here by the end of the week, I would think. Here we go, we're running 4.1, 4.2. What's our bushels per hour here? I'm guessing it's pretty good. At 3,500 bushel an hour pretty easily. I've seen that number go up to pretty close to 4,000. I think it'll run 4,000 an hour all right. Right now we just need the, uh, the higher bushel corn to get there. Yeah, it's running pretty good. I gotta say. I wish I could do this all day. We got full before we got to the end, so dumping, sitting still. Where's the fun in that? Right. So this side of this field was planted with the Fit Momentum, and it was a 16-row planter. Now right here, for whatever reason, our A-B lines were way off, and we're actually a whole 30 or 60 inches off, or 30 inches off, or whatever. There's an extra, there's a guess right there. But over here, we are only taking now, because of that, seven rows. That's going to be a definite pass of shame at some point. So we're going pretty slow. That's because the tree line is right there, so no need to going fast. Well, that is it. We are, uh, trucks are full, carts full, and this thing is uh, out of fuel. So BJ's going to haul this corn up to the bins. I'm going to have to blow this uh, feeder house off before we fold the head. And then we'll uh, mosey on down the road. So we're going to fold our head up. Got to use both hands for that. Just uh, basically because we're using the power source off our Crary switch. And it's not a toggle switch. So i got to hold it down and push the button at the same time. I know, first world problems, but I gotta put you guys down. easy now don't get blinded by the lights all right guys that's it for this one all in all not a bad first day we did 10,000 bushel uh, nothing broke down the gleaners dialed in we are ready to roll in the morning yeah we're pretty excited uh, yields are better than we expected it's been a good time today so far but hey do me a favor if you're enjoying what you're watching here 
Do me a favor and give us a thumbs up. Let's see if we can boost our YouTube algorithm a little bit and gain some momentum going into harvest. Uh, also, subscribe if you're not. And we'll see you in the next one.